we are going to create our first migration process utilizing Entity Framework Core code first and generate the schema in our local DB SQL Server database. So we're going to implement our first migration. We're also going to seed some data into our local DB. And we're just going to implement this in our home controller on the index method. But I just want to show you how you can generate this. So I'm going to come over here to my Entities folder. I'm going to click Add, New Item. And I'm going to create a class here. And I'm going to name it Seed Data. Now I'm not going to type out this class. I already have a file for this. But I will explain it once I copy it in. So right there I have my class Seed Data. I'm going to come up to this text file here. It's going to be a static class. We're only going to implement this the first time. We run our context here. And let me show you what's happening here. It's pretty simple what's happening here. We have a static class C data. And we have one method on the C data that's taking an application DB context type to associate our DB context. And we're saying that while we're using that context, we're going to add a range of data to our database. And the data is going to be associated with the person. We have a new person here with person ID 1. We have a first name of John, last name Happy. We've created a second person. And to associate with that first person, as you see person ID 1 here, you see those matching to John Happy right here. And then you have an address ID of 1, and then you have a city of Plano, street, zip code, and state. Same thing with address 2, ties back to person 2, which is Joey. And then what it's doing at the end, it's saving this to our DB context, and then we're running the dispose method to remove the allocated resources. Typically in ASP.NET, when you have the using statement and the closing using statement, it does that by default, but I went ahead and added it just to make sure that it clears out those resources. This is how we'll see data to our database once we run our application. Now you can implement it in the startup.cs to always see the data, remove it. I'm just showing you how you do it one time once you implement it. And in this case, once we have this set, now you know that once we actually run our application, we want to implement this method. So how do we do that? We come to our home controller. And what you want to do is you want to create a private variable here. And we want this to be application DB context. My context. And then what you want to do is you want to inject that into your controller to manipulate that context. So let's come over here and let's put another application, DB context, context. And then what we want to say is this dot my context equals context. So we're setting it to the constructor value. And then what we want to do is we want to come down here. Remember, it's a static class right here. So we have C data to associate here. We want to come in here and we can say C data dot seed. And we want to have that there and we want to pass my context. So right there. So we want to seed to the context the data associated in this class. So that's going to happen every time the home controller runs. And then once we run the app the first time, we'll have that data. Typically, you don't want to do this every time. You'll run into issues. We're not doing a validation check to make sure that it's already seeded in the types because you'll have primary key constraints. I just want to show you that this is a way you can implement it just directly in your controller. Write a little method, pass it as a parameter, and you're done. So now, in our SQL Server Object Explorer, Let's refresh this. We have here, as you can see, we have no tables associated in it right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to perform with our Package Manager Console in Visual Studio the different EF commands to associate this. So how do we do this? We can come down here, and what I'm going to show you here is just using it through Visual Studio. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to do this with via command line. If you go to the directory of your project, you can do this via command line. And then we'll also look at the different commands associated with Entity Framework Core. So right here, what you want to do is you want to put add migration 
my first migration. So let's run this. This is going to generate the migration of our app. So you're going to see some migration folder created right here to associate with this. So this is going to tell you our first migration, what it's going to be. It's going to be inheriting from the migration class. We have override method to associate right here. We can also put different properties to associate with our SQL Server database. So it's automatically creating this for you. And then you're saying the key constraints associated with the address ID. When you create the table persons, you also have the primary key to associate back with the person ID. This is the migration drop table. And these are override methods implemented from inheriting from the migration class. So right there, once we have that, we've created our first migration. You're not going to see anything yet here until, and we look at this real quick, nothing yet until we run this command. And you're going to see the database schema seed to our local DB. So once we have that done, let's look at here and let's refresh this. So now if we go into our databases, we go to system database, we go to master, we go to tables. We have the person database table right here associated to our entities. We have a person ID, first name, last name. And we also have the columns for our address, address ID, city, person, state, street name. And then we also even have the DBO EF migrations history. So we can view the data in here and we already have a specific ID tied to my first migration. And then you can see all of that associated with the generation class right here. So now, as you can see, this is how our DB context is generated into our schema for our local DB. You can see all of this. So you can come in here and say view data. And as you can see, there's no data. Until we run this application, that seed class file is not running. So right there, once we run this the first time, the seed data should run. So let's go ahead and let's rebuild this app. And let's see if the data seeds as we have before. So let's come in here. Let's click Run. And we get to there. Nothing is showing on the actual page itself. Let's rebuild this. And let's look. Let's see if we see any data in here. And it should correlate to what we generated before. So let's go here and let's click View Data. And look what we have. We have the data seeded to our tables right here. So look at that. So we see the street name, the zip code. We see the state. We see the address. If we go back here, let's look at the person. Let's view the data. And as you can see, John Happy Joey Johnson. And that's being associated with our C data class. So now, let's say right now I want to do some changes and I want to implement this. Let's create, let's add a migration. So we're going to add a migration. But remember here that when you click add migration, my first migration has to have a different name. So let's say my first migration one. If you type my first migration again, you're going to get an error. But let's just type one here. And now if created, as you can see right here, my first migration one, you're going to still have the same data associated here. So let's close out of this. And then let's type update database. So we have the update database command implemented again. And as you can see, that's done. Let's go back to our SQL Server Object Explorer. And let's see what we have again. And we'll go back into the tables and let's see if we see any data. We still have the data associated inside of there. So now we've implemented and seeded some data to associate in our application. As you can see, the different migration types to associate with that. So now this is how you seed data to your database. There's other ways to implement it. I did it where I created a simple static file inside of my entities folder and where it's taken a parameter of my application DB context. I'm adding that range of data to associate inside of my application. And then what am I doing? I'm running the commands for adding a migration and to update our database to associate with our migration process. 
And then what I'm doing is inside of our controller, I'm implementing that seed data static class to call the seed method and passing a private field to associate inside of our constructor to pass into our index view. This is how we implemented our first migration process in Entity Framework Core for our ASP.NET Core application. What we'll do in the next lecture is look at all of the different EF Core commands associated inside of our project and what we can generate for our app.